Hi, my name is Shania. I'm a second year in computer science, and here at Minds, I'm involved in ACM, ACMW, MEP, as well as PADS and CS at Minds on tour. I study computer science because I enjoy problem solving and making everyday tasks easier through programming. I welcome you to the CS at Minds Python video. In this video, we're going to talk about reading and writing files in Python. But first, let's start with a good quote. I have files, I have computer files, and you know, files on paper. Most of it is really in my head, so God help me if anything ever happens to my head. This is a good quote from George R. R. Martin, and I know Dr. Kemp feels the same way. The previous CSM Minds Python video was on file system structure. Recall that the file system structure is like a tree. It has a root, which is at the top of the tree, and then a number of other files and directories. In order to describe the location of a file in the file system structure, you can use either an absolute path, which starts from the root, or a relative path, which starts from the current working directory. Also recall that you have several possible modes you can use when opening a file, and what mode you choose depends on whether you want to read the file, write the file, or both. This review slide also shows an example of opening a file to read. Once we have opened a file for reading, the next question is how do we read the lines of text inside the file? Not surprisingly, Python has a read function available. And we call this read function using the dot operator on our file object, which we have named f in our open file command. In this example, the read function will return all the text that exists in the file as a string. We encourage you to try it. That is, type this is my short story into a file named story.txt using some text editor. Then, read the file from Python's interactive interpreter. You should see it print whatever content you put in the story.txt file. We suggest you to try this exercise and then also think about what will happen if you call f.read a second time. Pause the video, create your story.txt file, and find out. In the first f.read command, you should have seen the contents of the file story.txt printed. In the second f.read command, you should have seen Python print an empty string. That is, the story.txt contents will not print a second time. This is actually expected. Since we read the file with the first f.read command, we were actually looking at the end of the file when the second f.read command was executed. Normally, our files will have many lines of text. And typically, we will want to deal with each line of text separately. So how do we do that? That's right, with a loop. As seen here, Python allows us to have a for loop specifically for reading lines of a file. We type for line in f, and then Python will automatically assign the next line of text to the variable line. If desired, we can then use a string split function to return a list of all the words that exist in the line of text. Now that we know how to read files, we need to learn how to write files too. For writing, we use the write function which is another function that we call with the dot operator on our file object. The write function will then write the string provided to the file. If we opened our file in write mode, then the write function will overwrite any existing file with our new string. If we open the file in append mode, then the write function will append our string to the end of the existing file. Try it. Write another story, but this time write it with the interactive interpreter. And be sure to call the close function listed, which we'll talk about next. When we are done reading and or writing a file, you should always close the file with the close function. Doing so will free up system resources and allow other processes on your system to work with that file. In addition, if you don't close the file, sometimes odd behavior might occur. For example, the write command you executed in the previous slide likely didn't write to the file until you closed the file. Python also provides the with statement for opening files. Using the with statement has a few benefits. A with statement can be used in Python to open a file, execute a block of statements, and close the file automatically. This is useful because forgetting to close a file is a common issue that can lead to frustrating errors. The with statement guarantees that the file will be closed. Let's put what we've learned so far into an example. This example code opens a file myfile.txt for reading and appending. We use the as f to tell Python that we will use f as an alias for our file object. Then we can do anything we need to with the file, like reading and writing, inside the code block. When the code block is done reading and writing, the with statement will automatically close the file for us. Time to practice our new skills. What will be printed if this block of code is executed, given the contents of myfile.txt shown? 
Please assume that myfile.txt is in the same directory as a Python code file. Also, while you haven't seen the readline function before, it does what you would expect. Specifically, it reads one line of text at a time. We encourage you to pause the video to trace through the code and figure it out. Let's walk through this code together. First, the width statement will open the text file for reading with the alias f. Then, the first f.read line will assign the first line of the text file, which is CSEI, to str1. The second f.read line will assign the second line of the text file, which is 102, to num1. This assignment will occur after 102 is converted to a float. When printing both variables, Python will actually print an extra new line character because the str1 variable will contain CSEI and then a new line character. We hope you now have a good understanding of how to read and write files in Python. We encourage you to practice using the functions in this video to become more comfortable with file input and output. Thanks for tuning in. See you around campus.